Hi, I'm Jeff and I'm here with John from 3DP Unlimited. Hi John, how are you doing today? Doing great, thanks. Now we've been looking at your new, uh, what is this behind us? This is the X1000 large format 3D printer. Excellent, and what makes this different from a lot of the other 3D printers out there on the market? Uh, number one, its size. The ability to go ahead and print objects that are one meter by one meter by half meter allows people to go ahead and make things to scale so that they can go ahead and validate that uh, it's meeting their design intent. Wow, that's a lot of space. Now, does that have any, uh, you know, is, as far as time, you know, time is money today. So is there any issues with uh, the speed or what kind of speeds can it operate at with such large size? Well, it's interesting. It, it becomes a decision on how fine you want it to print and how solid you want it to print. But I can go ahead and give you an example. We have a, a chair back here that took us about 200 hours to print. That's, that's eight days because the machine doesn't sleep. But if we go to a lower resolution nozzle on it, I can go ahead and print six times faster and the same object would print in about 35 hours. Excellent. And I, I see that the chair is also very large. So when you go out to the outermost most regions of your build area, does that have any play in the tolerance uh, in the chair? You know, once you get up there and the actuator is at its nth most level? Well, what's good about this machine is it's, uh, it's a real machine. We're talking about industrial linear guides, anti-backlash backlash lead screw technology. So I'm holding resolutions that you would expect if you're doing typical machine operations with a water jet, a plasma machine, that class of equipment. So on the Z in particular, we have chosen to go ahead and keep the bed at a stable height because it's ergonomically advantaged. Uh, but as you move the bridge up, the center of gravity is almost center line, so you don't get this wobbling effect that uh, might be a pendulum and cause a bad print. Excellent. And what type of materials are able to be used with this version? Uh, about 30 plus today, and there'll probably be 10 more by the end of the week. Uh, that's what's really exciting about 3D print. Everybody thinks of plastic as just kind of a, a typical thermoset, but there's now materials that are wood filled bronze filled, graphite filled, materials that end up being porous like a sponge, materials like Ninja Flex that quite honestly have, have properties that uh, think uh, 1000 uh, PSI tensile strength. Wow. So it's, it's unbelievable what's coming by way of open materials, which is part of what makes this machine interesting. What I'm holding is something that would be a typical example of a desktop printed object. What we do is print objects like this. Okay, and I'll show some other examples, entire gas tanks, bumpers, things that are reflective of real world to scale objects. So walking over here, I'm gonna go ahead and indicate some things that you know, show the innovations that are happening in 3D print. Materials was one that I uh, highlighted specifically. The red object is what I call Ninja Flex. Ninja Flex is basically a material that can go ahead and handle tensile strength up to a thousand PSI, but it's printed. So imagine somebody who's making tennis shoe soles and they want to do prototyping. Other curious uh, materials, here's an example of bronze filled, wood filled, that type of thing. So examples of variations in material. Everybody tends to ask about print resolution. The object in my right hand has a print resolution of approximately 70 microns. Okay? The good news is you get nice resolution. The challenge is it takes longer to print. When it's more important to print fast, we have the opportunity to go ahead and change nozzle size. This is a, a nozzle size of 1.2 millimeter, and I can print six times as fast for the same object size. In the world of 3D printing, one of the things is to manage expectations regarding what raw prints look like, and then what the possibilities are to go ahead and do secondary finishing. We're showing a couple of examples from the automotive world where the process to go from the as printed side to what you see down here is literally the same process you would use at an auto body repair shop. They go ahead and use putty, bondo, do sand prime finish, and then you're able to go ahead and achieve that kind of showroom detail that may be important for your use case. Uh, we also like to go ahead and use it as an expectation management tool. There's perhaps too much hype around 3D printing right now. And by showing as printed versus the possibility, it helps people appreciate you know, uh, what's involved to, to go from what I will call unfinished to a museum quality piece. I'm holding an object which is a planetary gear. 
And this was printed as a single piece. It shows the capabilities of additive manufacturing, 3D printing, to do things that you can't do with a traditional machine tool like a lathe or a mill. Now, this reflects what you might be able to do on a desktop printer, and here's the second example of the th kind of thing that could be done with the 3 dpx 1000 So, I'm going to spin the wheel. Now, I have to say, you said a lot about the materials. Do you feel that the, the materials are designing the machines, or that the machines are designing the materials? Uh, boy, that's a great question. Uh, I, I think uh, the, the business opportunity is motivating the, the chemists, the material scientists, to go ahead and develop new materials. Perfect example, ABS uh, was invented with the intent of injection molding. Now there's all kinds of other polymers like PETG. It's kind of mm -hmm. like the, the same clear plastic you use in your uh, water bottles. Right. Okay, in the blister packs that you can never open. <laughs> That's the material, and it prints wonderful. Okay, so it's kind of interesting how the marketplace has uh, embraced the the new opportunity. Excellent. And and with the marketplaces, uh, what what are some of the different customers and industries that are utilizing such a large build space? You would imagine prototyping is still the largest uh, business opportunity. It's been estimated 70 percent. But what surprised us is that it's maybe 50% of our sales. We're seeing, we're seeing people who are developing their models not in CAD, they're developing their models in a graphics environment like Cinema 3 and 4D, Adobe Acrobat, uh, Illustrator, etc. And we're getting to graphic arts, art, and what I will call wearables markets that never, never would have been conceived. And if people want more information on this, where can they go? to the web, www.3dpunlimited.com. All right, thank you for your time. I appreciate it, thanks.